Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Brother Hosanna David. I supposed to preach on Sunday and do a live video. But in the morning of Sunday, while I was still in bed in the early hours of Sunday morning, I had a dream. I can't actually remember some part of the dream, but where I could remember very vividly is that I saw a man and he was praying. These are the very words of his prayer. May the Lord not take idolatry from us because that is what we feed from. And then I woke up. I was kind of, what kind of dream is this? What kind of prayer is this? How could a man pray that God shouldn't take idolatry from him because he benefits from it? So as I was thinking, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and told me that I should wait and shouldn't do the preaching until he gives me a message, that he wants to give me a message to preach. I said, okay, it wasn't strange. That wasn't the first time. I've had moments whereby the Lord would tell me, I want to speak through you. Go and preach. And without any proper preparation for the message, I've gone to the pulpit and preached. So I waited the Monday. Um, throughout that Sunday, no message came. I waited on Monday, no message came. Tuesday, before I could get a message. And this is a message that I got from the Lord. It was on Tuesday, 13th September, 2022. I wrote everything down. So I'm going to read from what I wrote down. I inserted a few scriptures because it actually tallies with the scriptures in the places I inserted the scriptures so that you can read some of these Bible verses and know exactly what the Lord is actually saying. I just want to remind you that in case you are new or you have not subscribed, please do where to subscribe to this channel. Those who sow to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Those who reap earthly benefits of sin shall also reap the eternal reward of sin. I am the Lord. Galatians chapter 6, 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life, life everlasting. Sometimes when you look at today's church and majority of today's Christians, you see things that could turn you off. Things that will make an unbeliever or a new baby Christian, a baby Christian, to give up on the genuine race for eternal life. The very doctrine that was passed unto us has been rejected because everybody wants to have it the new way, the popular way. But Except we be on the narrow path, we will never arrive at the eternal place that God has pre prepared for us to rest. There are two ways. There is a broad way that leads to death and destruction, eternal death, which leads to the place called the fire of hell, hell fire. There is another path, which is a narrow path. It is very narrow, it is rough, but it is straight. It leads to life, and only a few people find it. It is a path that is full of so many discomforts, it is full of so much persecution, it is full of trials and temptations, it is full of self-denial. It is full of fasting and prayer and a lot of things that will make you 
it, that will give you a lot of discomfort in this world. That is a path. This message addresses those who align themselves with those who reap from sin, those who benefit from sin, those who live in sin. This is a message that goes directly to the church. It is a message from the Lord to the church. I know a lot of people will be disappointed on the last day, as the Bible rightly tells us. That many will say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not done many miracle works in your name? But the Lord will tell them, I know you not, you workers of iniquity. Please let us take this message to heart. This is a call for self-examination and repentance. There are those who are actually laboring in the field. Some who preach, who do so much work for the kingdom, but on the last day they are going to be rejected because of their relationships with sinners. Jesus never uh, hid himself from sinners. He was a friend of sinners. But he had one aim. The aim was to call them to repentance. He was never benefiting from uh, the task collectors. Without him telling the task collectors the truth that pricked them to the heart and changed them. But if a Christian has a relationship with sinners and he has no no primary interest of changing that sinner, of preaching to that sinner, of influencing that sinner, and cause that sinner to realize their sins and turn to God, then that relationship is not of God. It shouldn't be in place. If it is the relationship of benefiting from the sinner without telling the sinner the truth, then that Christian will pay for it. There are many churches today, they know that their members are into prostitution. They know that their members are into scamming people. They don't tell them the truth. They may mention it once in a while, but they don't actually make it a whole message that is forceful, that is capable of changing their hearts, that is capable of hitting them hard. I tell you the truth, those pastors, they are going to pay for it. Uh, listen, I don't care about what people say. What I care about is the will of God. So I'm going to deliver the message exactly how the Lord gave it to me. If you see this message and you're angry, well, that's your luck. It's your business. My business is to do the will of God. If you are into any kind of relationship and you know this person has their money from questionable sources, please stay away from that relationship. Even if you are a pastor or you are a church member or you are a child and your father is into ritual killing and you know your father is into ritual killing, you can save yourself from the punishment that is coming to that person because you are going to share from what the perpetrator will reap tomorrow. There are parents who are, need, who are not into scamming. There are parents who are not into ritual killings, but they know their children are into these things, yet they reap the benefit from the tears of others, from the blood of the innocent, the benefit from the um, illegally acquired wealth. If you want to make heaven, stay away from these things. Let's go back to the message. Tell my children that I am not just their savior, but I am also their rewarder. Those found with the benefits of sin shall reap everlasting tears in hell. Though the evildoer shall fade away, 
and be no more on earth. His reward shall go ahead of him, and shall not fade away, but will abide forever. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Lord, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. One those who say, They are my children, yet they sit at the tables of the wicked to feed on the fruits of the sins of evildoers. Tell them that those who truly reject sin must not feed from it. I am the Lord. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. Thus saith the Lord. But if you say, You are my child, yet you continue to enjoy at the tables of those who wallow in sin, my judgment shall overtake you on the very day you expect a good reward from me. Behold, you have no machine that reaps in the field of iniquities, yet you receive the proceeds of corruption. Take yourself out of the midst of those whose condemnation has been pronounced long ago. If you do not prostitute, don't feed on the proceeds of halotry. It is an abomination to the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 18. All those who are not into ritual killings, yet are enjoying the money of ritualists, shall receive the reward of partaking in their evil doings. Let all my children examine their relationships and come out of the midst of evil people. Let all my children examine their relationships and come out of the midst of the evil people. Do not dine on the table of sin. Every rubber tree bleeds whenever it gets a cut on its back. You cannot use a rubber without benefiting from the bleeding of the rubber tree. This I say, stay away from those who feed on sin. Do not share their goods with them, lest you share in their eternal rewards. Let me explain a little bit. There is a tree that is called rubber tree. This rubber tree uh, really it has some white liquid that it bleeds out whenever you cut it back. If you make an incision on its back, it bleeds. So uh, this is a commercial tree. People plant it and harvest the latex that there is a, this latex that flows from it, uh, the white liquid. It flows from it, is collected into a cup, and they use it to produce plastic, uh, plastic materials. It is elastic. All those elastic rubber bands, they are made from latex, from this white liquid that flows from uh, the rubber tree. So what the Lord is saying here is that if you are um, using this rubber uh, uh, tree product, you are benefiting from the bleeding of the rubber tree. Let me break it down. If you are feeding on the table of a sinner, if a sinner is providing for you and you know, I'm not talking about ignorance when you don't know, if you know and you continue to feed on that table. For instance, a scammer. If somebody is scamming people online or offline, and you know, or the person is a criminal, those who are being scammed, they cry, they weep. They call upon God for justice. Some will, those who are idol worshippers, will go and call the name of the scammer or swear in their shrines. You that is benefiting from these things, you will also take your own share if you are aware. Sometimes, even if you are not aware, 
you could still reap from the curses. What the Lord is saying here is that if you are benefiting from these things on the tables of sinners, you are going to also reap their reward. Imagine a situation whereby those who are ritualists go to church and they want to donate money and the pastor says, well, as a matter of fact, uh, we don't need it. And they use wisdom to um, reject the money if it demands wisdom. There is this bishop in, I think, uh, see, one of these states, I think Cross River states, who uh, a, a, a governor of the state donated money to, and the bishop said, well, um, we don't need this money. Add some money to it and pay your workers that you are owing. And I applauded him. That is how a child of God should be. Assuming if that person is a well-known ritualist or a well-known scammer, and you are aware, as a bishop, as a child of God, that this person is a scammer, and he comes to your church to donate money, and you do not turn that money down, either directly or with wisdom, listen, you are going to reap. And I know a lot of men of God are guilty of this. Many of them know that these people, many of these people who are giving in their churches are into scamming, they are into ritual killing, they are into uh, stealing. Yet, they say, well, uh, the source is not my problem, God needs the money. Listen to me. The church is a body of Christ, and I will always ask myself, if Christ can't provide for his body, who will? This is my belief. And a sister, Sister Caro, told me one day a word that enters my head and I can't remove it from my head. She said, someone once told them, God's will, God's bill. She said, God's will, God's bill. That if it is God's will, it's, it is equally, automatically God's bill. So if it is the will of God, God will provide the money for the bill. God will always provide for his children. I am a life, I am a life testimony. I don't preach money. I have never told anybody to sow seed into my life or into my ministry. But God provides for me. Because he knows that I am doing his will. If he says, talk about salvation, I talk about salvation. And that's exactly what I do. He told me, 2005, when I received my Holy Ghost baptism, on the 21st of March, 2005, he told me, don't preach miracles. I will bless you. Preach salvation. Tell my people the truth. Don't preach prosperity message. Don't preach the God, prosperity gospel. Tell my people about their relationship with me. Preach salvation and I will bless you. The Lord has been provided for me. As a matter of fact, there are over 50 children on our uh, foundation scholarship scheme. And this is first time we have admitted more. So I don't even know how many now. God has been providing, even without begging, without asking. If it is God's will, it is God's bill. He will take care of the bill. So also your life. Your church projects are God's projects. He will take care of them. So don't collect money from prostitutes, from higher assassins, and from scammers, those who live in sin, who reap the benefits of sin, and they take this money to the church, and you accept them if... Many of these ritualists could give money to an individual and take the destiny of that individual. If they give that money in your church too, it is going to affect the spirituality of that church, of that ministry. I tell you the truth. Let's go back to the message. My children, 
let contentment be your guide. Do not delight in the delicacies of the wicked. Those who must journey through the night in a foreign land do not need the drummers to make their hearts merry, but their concern must be on safety and arriving home safely. You all who believe in my name are traveling through a dark world of sin. Watch so that you can arrive your eternal home safely. But if you marry with those who have no eternity in view, you shall be deceived to do as they do. Let all those who sleep in sin wake up because there is no more time. The knell of death shall ring and their chances to repent shall be no more. This is a message the Lord gave to me. I have two scriptures here. Revelation chapter 22 verses 12 and 13. And behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Then Matthew chapter 7 verses 21, 22, and 23. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let us be mindful of our relationships and who provides for our needs. You may be in need, but remember the word of the Lord, that he cares, if the Lord cares for the fowls of the air and the grasses of the field, the flowers of the field, how much more will he care for you? If you, a father, knows how to give good gifts to your children, despite you are a man with a wicked heart. If you can do that, if you don't give your children stones when they ask for bread, if you don't give them serpents when they ask for fish, how much more will your father that is in heaven know how to give good gifts and the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? God knows how to provide for all our needs. I know you want to survive. I know you have needs. But is the Lord not interested in you? Remember, his mercies are new every morning. He will provide for you. Don't give up. You may, be, you may be in a relationship where the man or the lady cares for everything. Your bills are taken care of. But is that relationship the will of God? You may be in a business and that business is built upon corruption. Why don't you come out of it? The Lord knows how to provide for you. I know I have needs, and I know there are people who can provide for my needs. But if that will affect my relationship with God, why can't I trust God for provision? It may delay according to human perspective. I could call it delay, but He will always provide. If it is His will, God's will, God's bill, He will always provide. Even if it means being thrown out of your apartment because you can't afford the rent. Trust God. We are on a journey to our eternal place of rest. We will arrive soon. The rapture could take place. We could die. The things we see in this world should give us every energy to see things as urgent. I mean, see the preparation for the return of our Master, Jesus Christ, as urgent. 
we have to prepare. Don't let anything make you miss salvation. Let me ask you a question. Will you be here more than 200 years? Will you be here more than 150? Will you be here more than 100? Will you be here more than 80? Will you be here more than 75? As a matter of fact, we don't know. But one thing is sure, you won't be here more than 150. But do you know that where we are going to is not 100 years? Remember, the soul does not die. The soul came from God. It is God's own life. He breathed into a nostril the breath of life. And we became living souls. We don't die. Genesis 2, 7. We only cross from this side of life to the eternal side of life, the everlasting side of life. So it is this, the state you are able to secure here that you will remain forever. If you, have, if, you are, if you have eternal life here on earth, you will have eternal life when you cross. If you live for sin right here on earth, when you cross over, it will be in a place of torment. It is not 100 years. It is not, there is no year there. Because it is eternity. Eternity is a time that has no beginning and is existing now and has no ending. Time is a fragment of eternity. There is no time there. Why don't we call ourselves to order? Don't steal the things that are supposed to benefit your soul and use them and use them to feed your flesh the things that benefit your flesh. What I'm saying is don't leave, don't rob your soul of eternity. Eternity is real. The Lord is coming soon. Call yourself to order. This is a message to Christians. Repent of your sins. Call yourself to order. The Lord will provide. Why don't we come to the point of conclusion where we can say, if I perish, I perish. Why don't we come to the conclusion that I know God is able to save me. I know God is able to provide for me. But even if he doesn't save me, I won't do this evil. Even if he doesn't provide for me, I prefer to go hungry. It pains my heart when I see children in, in, who are into prostitution because their parents couldn't provide for them. I wish I have to provide for all of them. But resources are scarce. Please, don't give up, even if your parents can't provide for you. Better be on the streets. The angel that God is sending to rescue you from that predicament could be on the street, waiting for you to be thrown out of the house of that man that you are living, that you are cohabiting with. The angel that God sends to rescue you from lack could just be on the street in the labor market waiting for you. He wants you to quit that dirty job so that you can rely on his provision. God will always make a way. Let me tell you the truth. I started paying my own school fees when I was in primary school. Throughout my secondary school, I paid my own school fees. I, I attended St. Michael's College only. Delta State, Nigeria. The school noticed that I was always out of school and it was time to give uh, positions to seniors. So they made me the senior prefect of the school and so people said, no, we can't make this man, this uh, uh, Hosanna Devi, senior prefect because he's always absent from school. They checked my results, they saw that I was doing well 
but I was so irregular in school. And they said, something is happening. Why don't we find out? So they, they went to my class, asked for someone that knows my house. Someone said, I know, his, I, know, I know his house. So they went, summoned my mom, threw that my classmate. And my mom opened up to them that I take care of my own bills. I paid rent, feeding, I had my own farms. I, I, I used to fry Gary. I had my own farms. I knew I would do the work of God, but I had no help. Do you know this school? Public school gave me scholarship in my final year. And they took care of my bills, including enrollment. I mean a public school, a government school. This is one of the things that actually prompted me to say, let me set up my own charity organization and see how I can also help others. God will provide. You don't need to dip your hand into sin or align your lifestyle with those who are, are into sin, who are doing dubious things to get your money before you can get your needs met. The Lord will always meet all your needs. Cast all your care upon Him. He will provide for you. Now for those of you who want to change, I want to pray for you. Father Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We ask that Lord help your children to make the right decisions. To stay away from people, even though they benefit from them physically. Lord, help them to stay away so long as it will rob them of their a place of eternal rest in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord God Almighty take away every stone from your heart and put his spirit in that place. Let God take away your hearts of stones and put in there the heart of flesh, the heart that will be remorseful, the heart that will obey God, the heart that will be in alignment with the will and the word of God, in the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are married to Muslims, who are married to people of other religion, and you are Christians, for those of you who are compromising because you are in a relationship with someone who is not a born-again Christian, even though they claim to be Christians, May the Lord give you wisdom. May the Lord give you the spirit of discernment to know what is right and what is good. Let there be a revival, O Lord God, in the lives of your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, those who are compromising because they have no help, Father, please provide for them. Help your people. Help your children. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. In case you don't have any church you attend, please look for a church to attend. If you have been at home, you have no church you are attending, I invite you to join us online. The Narrow Ways Christ for All Nations. Do visit our website tnwcfen.org tnwcfen.org ORG. If you want to give your life to Christ, feel very free to reach me. My contacts are on the screen. You can reach me on social media at Ozana e. E. Devi, or you could visit my website OzanaDevi.com. Thank you and God bless you. Before you go, don't forget to share this message. Share this message with someone. If you have not subscribed, please do where to subscribe to this channel and follow us on other social media platform. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.